you are watching Adjuster TV. What I want to talk to you about today is how you can beat out more experienced adjusters even when you're new. Hey IAs and welcome to the Auto IA Show by IA Path. At IA Path, we help you get experience requirements weighed with our 90 day online virtual mentorship program. If you're interested, head over to iapath.com. Do you need errors and emissions, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claims Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, they want to give you peace of mind while you work with the insured. To apply, head over to cplic.net today. Now today I'm bringing on a special guest. In fact, I was watching this old recording I had done an interview with an industry leader. His name is Jason Heenan. He's the host of Adjuster Talk. He's also the owner of Royal Adjusting Services. And let me tell you something, Jason knows how to get work. And even more specifically to you, he knows how new people, millennials, and the younger generation can get work even when you're facing more experienced and veteran adjusters. So today I'm gonna to talk with Jason and play that video for you about how can new people stand a chance? What are some ways that we can try to gain the advantage even if we're new? But first, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, the IA firm CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates dedicates their management team to training and developing a talented adjusting team. As a full service insurance adjusting company, CCMS specializes in every part of the claim service cycle. Day-to-day -day property, casualty, complex, residential and commercial losses, strategic process and measured results. CCMS and Associates, they're currently looking for adjusters who are interested in working TWIA aka Texas Windstorm Insurance Association events. For more information or to join their roster, send them an email at careers at cm... For more information or to join their roster, email them at careers at ccmsclaims.com or visit ccmsclaims.com slash work dash with dash us. For all the best tips, tricks, and tools, head on over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. While you're there, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll get notified every time we have a new video. So if you're ready to get the inside tips from Jason Heenan, the host of Adjuster Talk, industry leader, and founder of an IA firm, then get ready. All right, I am joined by Jason Heenan who is the host of the Adjuster Talk podcast, which I think I get more listeners from his podcast than I get on my own, just by visiting him once a year. So Jason, I'm honored you've come on to talk with me today about a topic I know you're super passionate about and is super important in the insurance industry, which is networking. So when I say the word networking, Jason, what comes to your head? What does it make you think of? Well, Chris, first of all, I just uh, am honored to be on your podcast again and uh we've built a great audience between the two of us uh bouncing back and forth between adjuster talk and uh, the ia path so uh, thank you uh for including me in uh, your show and thank you as always uh for your promotion of uh, royal adjusting services and adjuster talk I, can't, I don't know what we would have done without your network you're welcome sir i love being in connection connection with you all right. Uh, the question was networking and uh, what networking means to me. You know, whenever I started ad adjusting in 2004, they called it the good old boy network. We didn't have all, uh, such fast ways to communicate. You know, just at that time, everyone was just getting cell phones. Like 
at that point, everyone had just gotten a cell phone or had had one for five years, right? And so information moved quickly, but now it's just lightning speed. You know who's in, you know who's out, you know where the claims are, you know where they're not, you know who has the hot training, like the hot training that's getting deployed, and you know who has the old school stuff that's not working right now. So when I think of networking, I think about that group of people who are wanting it and they're eager to, um, um, you know, basically soak up everything there is uh, to prepare for the next thing, you know, the next event or the next stage of their own life, whatever it is to them. But that, when I think of networking, I think of those people with the hunger pangs, man. Awesome. So if I pushed you and I'm going to push you as I have every person I've done this networking interview with, uh, for definition, if someone says, I, yeah, I hear you guys talking about networking well, what does that mean, Jason? What, what is the definition of networking to you? All right, Chris. Um, that's a great question. I wish I had a little more time to prepare for it. But whenever you said that, I kind of got the image of a spider web in my head. And when you're talking about networking, you need to think of yourself as the guy in the middle of that spider web. And each little tangent or string coming off of that middle needs to be uh, your feelers out there, you know, for whenever um, that next thing that you want lands in your web, that you're available to listen to it. You have the pulse of the independent adjusting market right there at the end of your fingertips and you're able to get uh, that information right away. So that way you don't miss the opportunity. That's what networking is about is, is creating opportunity and recognizing opportunity. And then of course, if you have a good network, you're able to then capture it. Awesome, love it. So you got to touch on this question already, but we always say in here in the industry, especially the insurance industry, that it's all about who you know. Is that really a true statement anymore? Chris, I don't think so. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that is a true statement anymore. It's important. It's important to know people who are well-connected and well-respected. It's important to know people who are positive and are looking for better things for themselves and their own network. But I think a guy with ambition and in control of a uh, uh, of uh, you know his, his future i think that you can almost wedge yourself into an opportunity if you're on the tip of someone's tongue or if you've you've done your homework beautiful love that answer so what do you see you know you work a lot with millennials uh in royal adjusting absolutely they're the best generation brother absolutely so what are the mistakes though that you see new ias particularly making when it comes to network Oh man, don't get me started. This is I, th all right. Let's talk. Quitting. I mean, I see so many well spoken, well written, prepared resume men and women, uh, especially uh, uh, millennials, um, with their stuff together. You know, people who've been interested in insurance for some time that are asking the right questions. And then when the tide goes out, they just kind of disappear. And I don't know where they go, but um, I love getting those check-in emails. Uh, I got there. There's a guy named Nick Washington. Uh, he just uh, sent me a message the other day. High on life, dude. He just finished uh, getting his uh, um, adjuster's license in whatever state, and he wanted to know what the next step was. He said, "What you know? I got my license. What's the next step?" Those are the people I like to hear from. That's that's where I get my motivation. So. For you guys out there that have been working on this project for a year or two years, that's nothing. Opportunity's not always going to be right there. But if you do capture it when it comes around, you'll know why you spent all that time. You'll know why you were patient. You'll know why you were grinding while everyone else is resting or sleeping or whatever other people do that don't work hard. So don't quit. That's what that that's the answer to the question is is just the guys that disappear and they have all the tools, but they just don't have the patience to wait for the opportunity or know what opportunity looks like. 
Fantastic. Now, Jason, how has networking in your personal career, how has networking helped and affected your career up to this point? Chris, I wouldn't have made it without my network. I mean, that, it's just as simple as that. Being a nice person, I, and I, of course, I have my uh, mom to thank for that. Um, being a, a, a good, hardworking kid, I was never talented, but I always worked hard. And uh, I'll just tell you the biggest opportunity that came in my life uh, was whenever I was trying to make the bridge from being an IA to an IA firm owner. And I had been hustling, and this is how long it took, guys. It took me three years to get me my first major client. Three years of dead air and, and, and trying to figure out where that client was going to come from before I got it. And it came in the form of a t-ball coach I had not seen in you know, 15 years. And by, you know, by luck, he just happened to be a claims adjuster for a very respectable insurance company. And I'll be darned if he didn't give me a break. So that was the biggest break in my career. And just from being a hard work, like B team t-ball guy, um, that guy knew I'd, I would uh, hustle for him. And uh, let uh, 11 years after I started the company, I don't know what I'd have done without it. They, you know, the second and third and fourth opportunities wouldn't have occurred. And there's, you know, there's plenty of other stories about when I got my uh, break to become an independent adjuster from a staff adjuster, when I moved uh, from a, the desk at Allied Insurance uh, to a field adjuster for Pilot back in 2005. Um, the network is critical. And going back to my analogy with the spider web, I regularly checked in uh, when I felt unhappy, I regularly checked in with the people who I would switch places with. And uh, that is what, you know, uh, ultimately led to, um, you know, where we are right now, whether you uh, say I'm successful or not, that's up to you. But I, you know, feel pretty good about uh, what my network and, and hard work has done for me. Love it. Love it. So networking's helped your career. It's propelled it. Now, to kind of wrap this conversation, this topic up, what, you know, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people um, that you wish you could grab right now and say, listen, these, this is what you need to be doing while you're networking right now. Before they get the shot and they give up, what do they need to be doing right now? What is that advice, piece of advice you'd give them about networking? When you say right now, tell me, are we talking about specifically like on January 11th? Well, right now in their career. So this season of where they're, they're getting right. their adjuster license, they're getting ready, they're getting started. Here's the advice, okay? And this, this can go for anybody and it, it should go for everybody. Never stop preparing. You can never be too prepared. And if you're having a bad day because it – the sun goes down at five o'clock at night during the winter time. And there's not a lot going on in the IA world right now. The guys that are working, they work year round. And the guys who uh, are cat people, they don't have a job right now. That's how the business works. That's why we can make big bucks six months out of the year and do your side hustle and enjoy your life for the other six months. Never stop preparing for the next thing. And the next thing for us is uh, storm season 2019. Um, and I can tell you this, I could rest on all the work I've put in in the last 15 years, but I'm not doing that. We're getting ready, man. I, I have two whiteboards full of uh, uh, projects that I'm working on right now, and uh, you should too, and so should everybody out there. They should be thinking about the future and how they can make it better for themselves and their family. Boom. Couldn't have said it better myself. And Jason, this is why I come to you, the king of Adjuster Talk, the host of Adjuster Talk, and the I guess the king of royal adjusting would be more appropriate. In the host yeah, I think that's the first initial uh, official announcement right there. I, I haven't even officially announced that to the world that uh, um, uh, royal adjusting services is no longer a partnership. Oh, there you go. Well, we heard it here first. And so, Jason, appreciate you, everything you're doing for the industry, everything you're doing for the IAs, and for taking the time because I know we're both busy. You'll have to carve out time to – I hope I use one more way to say, hey, here's some tips on networking. Really appreciate it, man. 
You betcha. Millennials, you stay at it. The next big event that happens, there's going to be a group of old guys that wash out. They're tired of hustling. They're tired of going from claim to claim. They're tired of collecting data. They're tired of cramming that data into a new style of report. They are going to quit, and that is going to be your opportunity. You make sure you're preparing for it right now, and you're doing a good job if you're listening to podcasts and getting all the information you can to make your future better. Jason, thank you so much, man. Catch you next time, Chris. If you're interested in becoming an independent adjuster or an auto damage appraiser as a part of a diversified independent adjusting portfolio, head over to ipac.com and click the how to find work button. We'll send you a free video course that walks you through how to break into an industry that is typically the good old boys network. Until next week, keep walking your path and claiming your life.